WHOU, cold water this morning, cold beer. Let's talk about cold beer. Want to do that? John White has joined me here in the studio to talk about, well, Black Fly Brew Fest. How are you doing, Chris? This is my favorite segment of the show. I wish we could do it all the time. I can sit here and talk beer with you all day long. Yeah, we've done it a few times. Yeah, we usually get about 20 minutes out before, you know, Fred comes in and says, okay, that's enough beer talk for the day. <laughs> Probably making him too thirsty talking about it. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing. Now, look, we've got a huge celebration again, the second annual Black Fly Brew Fest at the John Millar Civic Center, May 20th. And it's from noon to five. Tell us a little bit more about what's going on. You've got a lot, a lot of information now because it's next week. I, I can't believe it. Next Saturday. You're crazy. Noon. Crazy. For VIP, Ooh. you're in at noon. Noon? I'll be there. Uh, well, a little after that. I'll be there bright and early setting up, but I can't wait. Uh, me either. I'm excited, excited, excited for the event. That's just because uh, I've been kind of watching all this stuff uh, develop, and I'm pretty excited. That's right. We've been trying to get some excitement going on Facebook. We've been... Teasing what's coming in from all the brewers and some really good, especially VIP beers this year. They're bringing some different stuff that you can't really find most any place. But right, do we have a full list online yet on the Facebook page of everything that everybody's bringing? Not yet, because some of them are actually still getting their their stuff to us. But well, some of it's going to be fresh. Like we, we want to make sure we can bring it. It's so fresh we can only bring it today. You're right. <laughs> I mean, one of them, uh, I think it's the one up north, uh, Northern Brewing Company. Yep, they're still not sure which. The IPA or the red or something. There, there's still there's still the, several brewers that are like that. They're not. Well, yeah. if this is ready, we're going to bring it. So, uh, right. Well, some I, of the VIP beers, they just sound awesome. That I see coming in. I've been seeing some of that on the list on the Facebook page, the Black Fly Brewfest. If you don't like that page already, you have been missing out all year long. <laughs> it's got all the information that you need on it, and I am really myself. I'm excited. I can't, I can't believe I haven't traveled north to get anything anything from Northern Maine Brewing yet, but I am so looking forward to that malt backbone. I've, I've been tasting it in the back of my throat for <laughs> like weeks now, thinking I really want to have that taste now. I love the IPAs, and I love all the other stuff, but I'm, I'm really looking forward to a malt. And, and yeah, they're going to be bringing down malt, malt, and more malt. Yeah, and all their beers are made from uh, with malt from the North, the uh, what's it called, the Maine Malt House from, from Mapleton. Right, it's all, there's a lot of local stuff. I mean, my 90% it's local. Which, it, it's just amazing. I keep looking at all these different beers around the state, and those guys up in Mapleton, the box, they're, they're doing a great job. There's Maine malt is used in so many beers at so many breweries all around the state, mm -hmm. and that's just you know local county stuff. That's it's it's awesome. Yeah, I, I agree. It's really good. I, I'm looking forward to uh, to tasting their stuff and tasting every. I mean, how many brewers we got now? Thirty five, something like that. Right around there, yeah. Right around thirty five brewers, and I and see you got a list in front of you. How many brews are we going to be tasting, man? Oh, there's going to easily be a hundred. <laughs> so, and, and I'm talking styles of. Sour beers, fruited beers, IPAs, even some of the more traditional classics like the German lagers and Pilsners. I mean, something for everybody for sure. Some wines, ciders. Yeah. Just unbelievable amount of, of different flavors, different beers, and, and from breweries from every part of the state you could think of. No, from from yep. Caribou all the way down to... Well, you know, so Connecticut, New York, practically. Yeah, that's right. We got some from out, out, of, the, out of state. Right, right. Throughout New England. So, yeah, all over New England for Black sure. Blackhawk Brewing come from all the way from Oxford, Connecticut. Yep. Um, Lord Hobo from Massachusetts. Right. So, right. And Sam Adams from Boston, obviously. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, and that's all good stuff, too. But I see online, you know, some people still aren't quite sure what a brew fest is. And they're, I think they're kind of nervous. Like, I don't know what to expect when I go in. So, well, let's tell them. I mean, at a. Basically, the basic brew fest con concept, you know, you go, you pay one price, and they're set up differently. Some you have tickets, and you can get that many beers. Here you can, whatever you want to drink in five hours and taste. Right. So you're not limited. You don't have to worry about dragging around tickets to give the brewers. The brewers don't like it. We don't like it. So <laughs> so it's, a, it's basically one price, unlimited. unlimited. You show up, unlimited samples. Um, and, and the way it's set up, I've, I've been to some that are set up kind of, I don't know. I don't want to say ours is set up better than any, but <laughs> but it is. You know, Jane and company up there, the all the the chamber volunteers, yeah. they set it up great, and it's set oh, up yeah. kind of like I think the um, trade shows are. Yeah, yeah so similar. Yep. A lot of people that are you know have gone to those, and it's just free flowing. You just go in, and if there's a big line in one brewery, just go to another one, and, and right. there's going to be brewing staff, and the, some of the actual brewers will be there. They can right. you can ask questions. You know, well, I like this kind of beer. Well, I like anything you got, and they'll know. Oh, yeah. And they'll steer you where, where you want to go. We'll have a right. whole map that you get this year. Last year, 
some people are confused where to go for this and that, but we'll have a map handed out showing where all the brewers are located. Right. And out back, there's a, there's a food court. There's right. Awesome food. Awesome. awesome. Stuff that some of you guys are already familiar with. Courtyard is going to be there. The vault will be there. Mm. So you know that's going to be some great food. Yeah, awesome. The Blazing Nation from Bangor. <sighs> They're going to be there with the uh, wood-fired pizza like last year. Yeah, that place down there last year, you couldn't, you could hard, you had to stand in line for a long time to get a pizza out of there. Yeah. They're, they're going to try and correct that this year. They're going to be more prepared from what I had been talking to Maddie about it, and he says, right. oh, we'll be ready to go. Ah, perfect. And then, you know, people that go to the fair, I'm sure you're familiar with the Little Red Snack Shack from Callis. Oh, they yeah. They do, like, ribbon fries and fair foods. Yeah. So that's going to be there. There's going to be all kinds of good food to go along with all this great, right. amazing beer and ciders right. and wines. And right. Right. But, yeah, I mean, you, you go in, you know, if, if you're looking at it like, well, I'm, I'm not sure, $55, it sounds like a lot. We'll try out the general admission. You're in at 130 You still got three and a half hours. Yeah, it's only 35 bucks for the general admission. Yeah, and for 35 bucks, I guarantee you'll get your money's worth. 55 bucks for VIP, I guarantee. Just in product. You'll get your money's worth. Yeah, That's right. Yeah, just in product, let alone all the other stuff that you're going to be able to do and enjoy and have fun with and the people you're going to see. And it's just like a, it's a big party, you know. Yeah, and there'll be vendors there. Um one of them will be the Bangor Home Brewers. Right. There's a, there's a club down in Bangor. And they've produced, actually, you know, several of the guys that have gone pro now. Right. Two Feet Brewing. That guy mm -hmm. started from the Bangor Home Club. Mm -hmm. um, and another one down in Bangor. Oh, Maniacal. Maniacal, right. Who was, they were going to be part of the, the brew fest. They still are. Yeah. But they didn't get their licenses in time. The state hasn't still okayed them to pour their beer. So they will be around. Mm -hmm. um, showing different science behind the, the brewing. So you're going to be able to learn about beer if you want. You're going to be tasting beer. John, will, will they have any out in the trunk of the car? <laughs> 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 Those guys are maniacal, you know? <laughs> um, you know, there may be some somewhere in town, but it won't be at the brew fest. Right. It can't be. They can't serve it there. But, uh, you know, if they bring some up and you go out to the lake and enjoy one later, that's fine, too. Yeah, right? I might do that. <laughs> I just gave you an idea, <laughs> didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> but like the Bangor, uh, the Bangor area home brewers are going to show different things you can do with brewing and have uh, one thing they're going to do. One of the guys takes uh, spent grain because mm -hmm. after you brew the beer, your, your, your grains are spent. All the sugars have been washed off them. And you can do, you can make like pretzels with those, anything you can make with normal greens. Right. But this guy makes dog treats. He's going to be handing out dog treats to any dog lovers out there. Ooh. Made with spent grains. So nothing goes to waste. For a lot of those guys. Right, right. That sounds like a really, really interesting idea. I wouldn't mind uh, looking into that. Yeah. Yeah. Down in, in Brewer, I can't remember who it is, but somebody uses blank canvas as spent grain and does spent grain pretzels. Really? Yeah. So, I mean, all these brewers like to recycle their stuff and, and right. keep using, not waste stuff. Right. A lot of the stuff goes to farmers, pig farmers, uh, cow farmers. Right. And they'll take that spent grain. So nothing gets wasted. It's, right. It's just, I, I don't know. Right, no, no, I, I agree. I'm kind of geeky about this beer stuff. But. No, it's good. Yeah, it's all right. There's nothing wrong with that. We are going to have an absolute blast. I tell you what, there's a, a tasting glass that you're going to get with the VIP ticket. Everybody's going to get one of those, actually. But you'll also get an event T-shirt. You get the early admission at noon, and you get access to special craft brews <laughs> and hors d'oeuvres, hors d'oeuvres. Yes, yes. <laughs> and we don't, I don't know if we know, we haven't really all decided completely what the hors d'oeuvres are going to be. I guess they're... Some of the people are still working that up. Uh, Jane's working on trying to get a, a really great hors d'oeuvre thing put together. Yeah, whatever will be, will be nice little tasty treats for your VIPs. But right, right. And the general admission won't get some of those things. That's right. But the, uh, like the VIP beers this year, I was telling you, some of the ones I've seen, I'm like, oh, I've never had those because a lot of them, this is one of them by uh, Sebago. Yeah, it's yeah. the first time this has been anywhere. It's mm -hmm. um, a single hop pale. The name of the hop. This case from mind. It's on Facebook, though. I was talking right. about it yesterday. Yeah. But this is usually something that's only available at the brewery itself or at the Sebago Brew Pubs that are around down in Southern Maine. Right. So this is the first time ever being in Rooster County, a beer that I've never tried. Right. Nothing that could that has ever ventured up this way. It's the first time right. it's uh, been on this property ever. And Sea Dog Brewing, they're bringing their pale ale in, in a cask. Okay. Now, that's interesting. Let's talk about that for a second. In a cask. What's a cask? In a cask is, uh, like, it's not bottled or in a keg it's an actual it's called a cask but it's not they don't add any co2 it's all natural 
Um, okay, so it, it carbonates itself. It carbonates itself, yeah. Wow. And it, it, it'll give you a totally different flavor, and it's a totally different, like it's not carved up like a normal beer. It's, right. I don't know, it's hard to explain. Right. So, I don't know. Gonna have to up. try it, right? <laughs> well, that's cool that Sea Dog wanted to do that. You know, yeah. that's only, I was looking online like on Untap, this beer app that you can check into your beers and see what your friends are drinking. Right. That only has like nine check-ins, so it's, I, I mean, it's only been around like once or twice before right and that's going to be right here in Holton. all kinds of cool stuff like that yeah 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 i heard there's a dark one coming too what was that like an 11.5 oh that was uh barreled souls a barreled that, souls yeah they're bringing up yeah, they're bringing up a whole that, ton of stuff they make they? those guys make amazing beer down there in, yeah in uh Saco. yeah it's called the bourbon barrel aged dark matter with vanilla and hazelnut it's 11 and a half percent it's a dark beer and they don't even it's not even considered like a stout or a, a porter it's Really, and that's why they call it dark matter because no one knows what dark matter really is. Because you can't really, so. you can't qualify it in any one of those classes because it's right. got a little something of everything in it, right? Yeah, it doesn't really fit into any traditional category. Right. So that's and that's where they got the name dark matter. But if you like a porter or a dark beer or any of those things, you're gonna probably want to want to oh, try yeah. that. I mean, for sure. it's been aged in bur- bourbon barrels. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's going to be amazing. It's going to have a very very different. Taste. That's what they say about dark matter. They say you know you you know more of what it's not than what it is right <laughs> so that's how they come up with the name it's pretty cool yeah that is very cool that's a big one all right and uh, i know we got a lot of other brewers that are coming can you run down some of the list of, of the guys that are going to be here guys and girls oh yeah i can hit on some of these we got foundation bringing oh. their two two years in a row they've won the best beer in maine for their epiphany ipa yeah and it is awesome which never used to be available up here until recently and kent right. gets it down to the thirsty dog yeah and, but it only lasts about oh, eight minutes it, i know and he's been getting more and more this last time we got three cases of him still going that day <laughs> that's yeah. stuff you got to get it as fast as it drops because it's it's amazing it's delicious those guys are from down at one industrial yeah down in portland right across the road from uh allagash mm-hmm and Allagash, of course, will be there. And right. They're awesome. They're bringing the 16 counties again. Oh, that is such a great beer. It is. And it's it, it's got oats from uh, Aurora Mills Farms right out here in Linnaeus. Right. And something from the main malt house. Yeah. And they tried, they're trying to make it a complete main beer. Right. They haven't got enough hops yet to be able to do a, a year-round right. with just main hops. Right. But as much main product that can go into that beer, they do. Right. That's incredible. And it, it is super duper tasty. It's, I mean, it's, it's a great beer. That's another one that's hard to keep around. It doesn't stay in stores long. When it does arrive, it seems yeah. to disappear out the door pretty fast. And that's their their head brewer, Jason Perkins, has always wanted to do this: have a a beer that they can make year round, not one of their exclusive, you know, beers that they make that are only once a year. Right. But something that's distributed year round throughout the state that is made with main product. And he's finally got got enough. Uh, main goods that he can do it mm-hmm. and it's been out for over a year now mm-hmm. they, they did a few batches early that were you know they were changing it up and doing what they could right but now that he's got it he's bringing this out it's, it's out all the time and it's and, consistent and it's great yeah it's you can get this down at Kent's you can get it at County Yankee it's, yep. it's around town and yep. all over the state so yeah yeah and it is really fabulous it's really really fabulous and you got some brewing coming from York and yep. they bringing the whoopie pie stout again that was super popular last year that's a great beer and a foster free ipa with mosaic and i love that yeah. one. Oh, geez that is yeah that is fantastic i always pick that up whenever i see it yeah they make some really good beers and this will be their second time being up here in holden so that's awesome yeah we're really glad to... and some of the new ones like two feet brewing they just opened up over the winter down in bangor mm-hmm. and they they don't do ipas kind of like blank canvas they don't like to do an ipa mm-hmm, although mm-hmm. blank canvas did just do an ipa for the first time yeah well it happens everybody's gonna try something but uh yeah <laughs> And I know they're make, they're bringing up they call it Maine Morning, okay. And it's a coffee blonde ale, and it's, and it's got uh, Maine uh, maple syrup in it. Oh wow! So I want to check that out. They're not sure quite a, what they're bringing besides that, but right. I was down there in their tasting room here a couple months ago, and all their beers were, were really tasty. They do a lot of stuff with fruits and and different um, adjuncts. Yeah, um, yeah. This is all this is all very different, different, different. This is not your standard Coors Light Budweiser kind of thing. No. But there are some that, that are similar to that. Yeah, they have. Yeah. You talk about Pilsners, yeah. some right? Some of the Pilsners will be there. Um, and some loggers. Right. Pilsners, Dier- 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 yeah. from uh, Old Orchard, or from, uh, excuse me, Biddeford, close enough. Yeah, yeah. They're, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're, they, they do nothing but loggers. Right. Now, some of them have some different flavors that you've never tasted in a lager, uh-huh. I guarantee. Uh-huh. But 
There, there's a lot of easy drinking beers here at this at this brew fest. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's expand on that just a little bit. So if you are a Coors Light drinker, a Bud Light drinker, you know, or a traditional beer drinker that we you know have had up here for a hundred years, well. You try the Pilsners and the Lagers, and you can try different different ones. That is a great way to break into mm -hmm. the craft beer scene if that's what you're used to, and then you want to branch out just a little bit. Those are very easy on the tongue. That's right. And, and like I said, if you go up to one of these brewers and you say, well, this is what I like. You know, I tried this, and I just tried this over here. Do you have anything similar? Right. If they do, they're going to steer you in the right direction, or, or or they'll ask you, you know, whatever the flavors do you like. Do you like fruit? Here, try this one. And right. Uh, like Blank Canvas is bringing their um, coconut red. Oh, yeah. That's a very delicious one. Then they also have uh, rhubarb colch. Uh, that's going to be something. Now, colches are also, you know, they're similar to a Pilsner. They're not hoppy. They're really light, refreshing, and easy to drink. Mm -hmm. And this one's made with rhubarb. So <laughs> it's really popular. They, they've had that in town here at, at some of the different bars. Mm -hmm. um, I know uh, Marty up there down under. Mm hmm he just started carrying blank canvas too. So now blank canvas is at three different locations in town. It's pretty, I know, pretty neat. I know. Yeah, it is great. I'm, I'm happy to have some really, really good craft beer around town in different places like that in a keg. That's right. You know, which is really nice. And that's another thing about our brew fest. You know, some, some brew fest are bottle pours and right. they're just stuff that you can get anywhere. Right. You can go to the grocery store, you know, right. and they're, they're great beers, but they're not, <laughs> they're not on tap they're not draft beer they, like right. you're used to getting if you go to a brew pub or the brewery or right. the bars right and ours for the most part are all yeah. draft pours which yeah. you know draft draft beer is the best there is a difference between draft beers and uh and anything that's in a bottle it's just a plain and simple absolute truth so if you want to get as many uh draft beers as possible draft tastes you can do so at the black fly brew fest on may 20th yeah um four river from down in south portland they're bringing up they call it Preble. Yep. It's a raspberry raspberry Berliner Weiss, and it's I've never tried it. It's a German type beer. Yeah, and it's and <clears throat> they're all a little sour, but not mm -hmm. overly sour. Mm -hmm. So they said it's got tiredness. It's a ton of raspberry flavor. Mm -hmm. And I love raspberry beer, so I I have never had I this one. Too. I can't I wait too. to try it. Yeah, and there's ciders coming. There's some ciders. I mean, every flavor you could think of that's in a beer or a cider or a wine, they're all. They're all going to be there. Hidden Spring Winery is going to be there, right They're from Martin Hodgson. Let's see, seven different beers. Seven different I wines. Mean, wines. Excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> Sorry about that, Hidden Spring. Yes, they're bringing seven different wines. And, and then, then uh, good. Winterport Winery is bringing three or four wines as well. So yeah, so they're all. It's going to be like 11, 12 wines. So yeah. even if you're just into wine. <laughs> By the time you get done, yeah, it won't right. take long to uh, spend up your, your admission price. And then we get like Thresher Brewing. They're, they just opened up not even a year ago, I don't believe. And they're bringing a Pilsner and an IPA because that's the two guys that run it. Mm -hmm. One guy's a hophead, mm -hmm. and one guy likes the traditional beers. Right. They're bringing one of each. That's a great uh, great mix because, you know, I, I like all of them, too. I like them both. Yeah. I like so, them all. I can't I mean, wait. That, <laughs> I can sit here and talk about this list forever, but. Right, right. We'll run out of just, time. Just show up and no matter what kind of beer you like. Right. Like, I just saw an article the other day talking about there's no way you can say that you don't like beer anymore. Right. Not in this state. Right. And someone's like, yeah, whatever. Well, no, there's so many different flavors out yeah. there now and so many easy drinking beers. Yeah. There's yeah. no way you can tell me that you can try some one of these and say that's terrible. Well, you got to try every single one. There's so many flavors. There's got to right. be a beer out there for you. There's got to be something or a style that you didn't know that you were even attracted to. Because, you know, up until recently, we didn't have all these different styles available to us no, either. Like I, I was uh, listening to a podcast the other day and they said... <laughs> If you're in a main beer right now and all these different breweries, you're going to be able to tell your kids and your grandkids, I was, I was there. through the revolution and what changed <laughs> the face of beer, not only in the state, this is a countrywide thing, and especially in the Northeast. It's, right. it's just crazy. Right. How many breweries? There's almost 100 breweries in Maine now. Right. Now, last year we were talking, there was like 71. Yeah. You're talking almost 30 new breweries in right. the last year. It's, right. And that's what, you know, we really like to be the celebration of Maine beer. The biggest... The most main beer under one roof north of Portland is right. that Black Fly Brew Fest. Right. That, that's just incredible. Hats off to Jane and everybody else that's, that's yeah, yeah. set this event up. Thanks, Kent. Thanks, Jane. Thanks, John. John, uh, co-founder of this. Uh, it's a big deal. It's a bigger deal than you think it is sometimes, you know. The reason there are, and one of the reasons there are now 100 brewers is not just because everybody's jumping in to try and make a quick buck or anything like that. These are high quality. 
people that spend a lot of time, they've thought about it, they've brewed at home for years. Now they're getting into a, a larger situation where they can really do some commercial brewing. They already know they got a good product. They already know they got a great product. And all over New England and all over the United States, people are talking about these products that are coming from Maine. We sure. are sitting on the highest quality beer, the great, the best manufacturers, the people who have the greatest knowledge in the country. And you, John, and Jane, and Kent, are bringing those folks with all that knowledge and all this tastiness and all of the, the greatest on the planet right now taste that yep. you can possibly have right here to Holton, Maine. So, we, you know, we are extremely fortunate. And a lot of this, honestly, has been made possible thanks to the... Um, Main Brewers Guild and Sean Sullivan. Yeah. And he'll, they'll be here at the, the Brew Fest. And he really lobbied to get laws changed in Maine where if you're a brewery, you can actually serve your beer at the brewery in a tasting room. Mm -hmm. Now, that's what, in my opinion, and most people's opinion, that's what's enabled this explosion in Maine because now you don't have to get a big distributor and be everywhere and fight right. for shelf space. Right. You produce it and you serve it fresh as can be. Right at, right and at I've place, been to yeah. all these breweries, not all of them, but I've been to several, and that's one of the main reasons I wanted to set this up. Bring it right, right to Holton and show people yeah. what is out there in the state. Yeah, yeah. Well, John, I'd, I'd say I'd like to talk to you again for the next uh, oh, six <laughs> or seven hours. We could do this, really. We really, really could. We'll do but it off air. <laughs> we'll, we'll do, yeah, we'll talk some more after we get off the air. We'll go get a cup of coffee because i got to get going. i got some stuff to do, too. But, uh, folks, now you know it's happening on, if you didn't know, you've been living under a rock. But anyway, May 20th, noon to 5, John Millar Civic Center. Want to pick up your tickets? Do so today. The uh, VIPs have been going really, really wicked fast. We thought we were going to sell out a couple of weeks ago. It was getting close, and then it kind of slowed down. But we still got some VIP tickets left. Certainly have plenty of general admission tickets left. VIP is 55 bucks. General admission is $35. You can get them at the Thirsty Dog. You can get them at the Chamber of Commerce here in Holton. Or if you're up in Presque Isle listening or Fort Fairfield or Caribou, any place up there, Carol's Auto Sales has them in Presque Isle. So you can go in and pick them up there. And they're also available online. Just go to the Black Fly Brew Fest Facebook page, and guess what? You'll find a link to uh, buy your tickets online. So so many ways for you to be able to take advantage and get those tickets and do it today. Don't wait. Time is really running out. We're only a week away, John. Holy. Can't wait. It's going to be some kind of fun. We hope to see you there, okay?